Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, has been sacked uh, from her post. Uh, there's still a lot of confusion about why. Reports trickling out that there was a big row last night between the Prime Minister uh, and Ms Braverman, um, the uh, contents of which is still disputed. Some people are saying that the row was security related. Others believe it was to do with relaxing visas. Obviously, in the past few weeks, Suella Braverman has made a number of controversial comments. She criticised the Prime Minister for U-turning on the decision to scrap the top rate of income tax, calling it a disappointment and accusing fellow MPs of mounting a coup against the Prime Minister. She then made comments uh, after that about um, Indian um, visa holders overstaying uh, their visa terms in the UK, prompting a row to break up, a diplomatic row to break up between New Delhi and London and possibly putting a trade deal between the two on the back burner. So there have been these tensions bubbling over, but it's a hugely destabilising moment for the Prime Minister coming just a week after, or less than a week after, she's had to sack her Chancellor. Mm. Uh, some of the comments, as you've mentioned, that Suella Braverman has made over the last couple of weeks, I mean, they really do seem very eyebrow-raising. Were they particularly out of character for her? I mean, is there any surprise that she was saying things like this? Could it have come as a surprise to the rest of the government that she would have these views? I think on the tax um, side of things, it's well known that she's on the right of the party. Uh, you know, she sort of outflanks Liz Truss on that front and indeed was was the preferred candidate of some of the most libertarian free marketeer MPs during the party leadership contest this summer in which she did unexpectedly well. I think on the Indian visas comment, that was seen as quite a misstep, overstepping um, her brief uh, as uh, Home Secretary in a way because it's had this impact on the trade deal that was under discussion. I think that the fact she's been so outspoken um, has certainly suggested to many MPs that she's on manoeuvres as Liz Truss has looked increasingly unstable in Downing Street. People have suspected Suella Braverman of mounting a, a pretty thinly veiled leadership campaign. So it's been the source of some consternation among the loyalists of Truss that she's been behaving this way. Yeah. Uh, who is likely to be appointed in her place? Well, that's also messy. The chatter Never. is... <laughs> I shock you. I shock you, I know. But the chatter is that Sajid Javid was in the running uh, to take that position until um, wrangling in the past 24 hours about his um, displeasure with an aide of Liz Truss's, um, who he believed was behind a briefing against him. Who's now been him, suspended. Who's now been suspended. Is everyone drawing a diagram at home? <laughs> And that uh, is one reason I think Sajid Javid, who was slated to have the second question at PMQs, we were all there in the gallery waiting for what he was going to say, potentially something quite unhelpful to the Prime Minister. He never turned up. He never exercised his right to ask that question. Clearly some sort of deal done there. Now we're told that Grant Shapps is being tipped for that role as Home Secretary. Obviously, he's been um, scheming a lot uh, behind closed doors and down the corridors and Rabbit Warren uh, of Westminster in the past weeks. Maybe it's a canny move, therefore, to try and bring him inside the tent, bind him with collective responsibility so he can't keep getting up to these hijinks and has to abandon his data sheet, uh, his spreadsheet of all the data points uh, of criticism uh, against the, the Prime Minister. He's been speaking to lots of MPs, hundreds in recent weeks, and uh, logging down what they make of Liz Truss. OK, so we've had, um, it, just in the last couple of weeks, the shortest serving Chancellor of the Exchequer. That's right. Correct. Short, now the shortest serving Home Secretary, surely. Well, I'd, I'd have to take to Wikipedia to see if anyone well, else has, we'll check has, on has, that. Has, has died in office like the... Like poor George Canning. Like okay, poor, um, poor Rosie, our producer, is onto it. Uh, and yes, Ian McLeod was the Chancellor who died in office. Yeah, and um, I mean, people are bound to say now that this is another nail, nail, in, a nail in the Trussian legacy. <laughs> Well, uh, well, uh, absolutely. And, you know, just after she got through the sort of the PMQs of her life as it was billed, um, I thought actually, given the very difficult circumstances, she did just about pass. Um, the MPs I've spoken to felt, well, she didn't wow, but she um, she fought for it. She showed she had a bit of steel in her by calling herself a fighter, not a quitter. But things seem to have gone backwards within, you know, the past hour or so with this latest news. Yeah, yeah. She must look back fondly on those emerging pork markets. Uh, <laughs> I suspect that you might need to go because you're going to have quite a busy rest of the afternoon, aren't you? Thank you. Easy. Certainly am. Thank yeah. you. Yes, and already the texts are coming in. Uh, Suella, of course, was dreaming of Rwanda. Well, now she can go there. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone checked the flights to that great country? Asks Tony in London. OK, uh, tweet us at Times Radio or you can text 87222. Start your message with the word Times. I think